Hey. Hello to any and everyone who's who's online uh, right about now, just listening. Um, it's Thursday afternoon, and uh, I thought I'd just pop on and see if anybody's out there. And um, try to go over a practice question together. Try to do this live. I attempted to do this before. And um, it seemed like some of you folks enjoyed it. And I thought I'd come back on again today and try it again. It is, what, Thursday afternoon. I'm on the East Coast in Pennsylvania. It's about 3 o'clock. And I have about 30 minutes to myself before my son gets home. So um, here I am. And uh, try to give it a few more minutes, just maybe a second or two to see who else is going to pop on and see if we could kind of have any fun together and try to answer this question. Now, again, this is just impromptu. Um, just doing it, just not necessarily for the fun of it, but for um, just the learning process and see how we can get through this and see if I can uh, operate it just a little bit better. So basically what I have here is just a question um, and I'll read it and I'll read the answer choices. And then what I will do with you guys is uh, pretty much kind of show you how I um, kind of process and reason through questions uh, when I'm working with my students one-to-one -one and helping them with um, trying to work through practice questions and trying to understand the setup and the designs of the questions and how best to answer them and how to see through the questions to be able to understand what's being asked of you. Now, um, it's, you know, one of, the, you know, everybody learns um, differently and so, um, I don't expect anyone to pretty much pick up what I do the way that I do it or learn the way that I learn. Um, but what I think is most important is that you as the student, as the learner, as the one that's uh, taking the exam, um, the most important thing is for you first to understand what is your learning style. Are you an auditory learner? Are you a kinesthetic learner? Are you a visual learner? Are you a mixture of both or all three? Um, but it's really important for you to understand how you learn best. And once you know how you learn best, it's pretty important to kind of um, create and adapt um, how you study according to your learning style. So um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Bridget Montgomery. And um, I am uh, an administrator here in this group. It's not my group, but I am an administrator in the group. And I have a love and a passion for just helping people, um, helping other social workers um, become good social workers, better social workers, or achieve um, their goals. Um, apart from that, uh, I also enjoy um, just uh, providing therapeutic counseling services. Um, that's just what I do. And so enough about that. So let's try to get to this question. I see some people keep coming in and coming, coming in and out, in and out. But for those of you that are here, hi, welcome. And let's see if we can have some fun. If you don't mind just saying hello, you can say hello. If you want to engage and talk to me a little bit, I can't hear you. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, if you can hear me, just type yes or a wave or something um, just so I know that you can hear me. And if you can't, then I'll do what I need to do to adjust the sound. Okay. All right, great. Thank you, Brianna. How are you? Okay, so let's get started. So what's really important about um, prepping and preparing for the exam? The first thing that you need to know and you need to understand is that this is a reading exam. And what do I mean by that? Um, it's a reading exam. So you are being tested and assessed on how well you're able to read, understand, and conceptualize the passage, the information. 
So it's very important that you understand every single word in the passage counts. So sometimes we have a habit of skimming or reading too quickly. And by doing that, we tend to oversight or miss information that's pertinent in the passage. And so if you get nothing else out of this, um, the segment that we have today, just understand how important it is to make sure that you read every word and you read it with an understanding. So take your time when you're reading the question. Pay attention to each word that is listed in the passage and also pay attention to every word that is in the answer response as well because it's really important for you to understand that and so in um moving forward i want to kind of give you an idea or show you a little bit um of how you know i took my time to kind of read the questions so here we go a 45 year old male was referred to a social worker by his primary care physician. He reports a debilitating back injury two years ago and says that his physician is not managing his chronic pain well. He reports that the physician plans to stop prescribing pain medication and wants him to receive services to learn how to manage his pain. The client states that nothing will work besides more medication. He asked the social worker to call his doctor and ask him to give him more narcotics. How should the social worker respond? Now notice I was just taking my time with reading the question, but as I was reading the question, I was just trying to pay attention to the wording and put emphasis on certain words because in doing that, it helps give a different understanding of what it is that I'm reading. So again, a 45 year old male was referred to a social worker by his primary care physician. He reports a debilitating back injury two years ago and says that his physician is not managing his chronic pain well. He reports that the physician plans to stop prescribing pain medication and wants him to receive services to learn how to manage his pain. The client states that nothing will work besides more medication. He asks the social worker to call his doctor and asks him to give him more narcotics. How should the social worker respond? A recommend that the client seek a new primary care physician who can better meet his needs. B, provide psychoeducation on the link between mental health and physical health and discuss the potential for addiction to pain medication. C, agree to call the doctor and recommend that the client be given more narcotics. And D, assist the client in advocating for himself with his primary care doctor to obtain more pain medication. Now that's a mouthful, right? And so as we move forward and you got the passage, you read the questions and if you, I mean the answers, and then if you needed to go back and reread so you could kind of digest what was being said, that's okay. Don't be afraid to do that, okay? Always pay attention to the last statement. And that last statement says, how should the social worker respond? And so this is the question that we really want to pay attention to. How should the social worker respond? Okay. Now, another um, thing that I like to do, again, with helping me kind of conceptualize through the questions is I like to kind of break it down. Now, keep in mind that the ASWB only gives us two different types of questions. The first is a recall type question, and the second is an analytical type question, right? A recall and analytical. Now, for those of you who've been following me for some time, you'll know that I put this type of information up before because I really want you to get in your mind that there's only two styles of question, recall or analytical. A recall question is a question that's just pretty much assessing what you know. You either know the information or you don't. It's not like testing terminology or anything like that, but it will give you a situation that's assessing your knowledge of a particular situation. And if you know the information, then you can recall it. An analytical type question is that question that's going to have you process and reason. You have to be able to give a rationale or an explanation um, or a reasoning behind 
why choice A is the better answer or why choice choice B is the um, is the better answer. And so first thing you want to do is kind of look at the question and see what type of question it is. And to me, this is an analytical type question, okay? And so I'm going to go more for analytical. Another thing that I like to do is really try to highlight and point out key words that are pertinent in the passage. And identifying some key words, it can help you with being able to narrow down and get to um, be able to answer the question a little bit more effectively. So if we look at the passage, what are some of the key words that stand out? So we have age, a 45-year-old male who was uh, referred by his social worker. Um, who was referred to a social worker by a primary care physician. He reports keyword debilitating back injury two years ago and says that his physician is not managing his chronic pain well. So we, when we see the word debilitating, for me, that stands out for me. So I would, you know, I would highlight that as a keyword to pay attention to, you know, what is debilitating? I don't know if I just spelled that right. So he reports debilitating back injury two years ago there's a time frame here so two years ago he was talking about this pain injury right and he says that the physician is not managing his chronic pain well there's something else that jumped out at me too and i'm gonna pay attention to chronic pain right he reports that the physician plans to stop prescribing pain medication and wants him to receive services to learn how to manage 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 his pain so his doctor wants him to do something right? He want him to learn how to manage his pain. So he's going to stop doing something. The doctor is going to stop doing something. Okay. So keep that in mind. Pay attention to that. The client states, okay. Now, when you see that, you know that the client is saying something directly. The client states that nothing will work besides more medication. Nothing will work besides more medication. So he asked the social worker to call his doctor and ask him to give him more narcotics. So now we have the client call, um, asking the social worker to call the doctor to ask for more medication because he doesn't think anything else is going to work. So we have the word debilitating. We have narcotics. We have um, chronic pain. You know, so these are all different words that kind of jumped out at me and I would kind of highlight as a key, you know, some key words, right? So let's continue to move forward. Now, the big piece to the puzzle is being able to identify the problem. So if you can identify the problem in the statement, you have half the problem, half of the um, situation done, right? You have half the answer done. And so you want to be able to look at this passage and see how you can highlight what is the problem in the statement? So we know we have a 45-year-old male um, who was referred to a social worker by a primary can, um, care physician. He's saying that he has debilitating back injuries two years ago and um, feels that his physician is not managing his pain well. He reports to, um, that the physician plans to stop prescribing the pain medication and he wants to receive services to learn how to manage his pain. So the client states, nothing will work besides more medication. He asks the social worker to call his doctor and ask him to give him more narcotics. How should the social worker respond? Well, what's the problem here? If anybody can identify the problem or what do you think the problem is, write it in the comment section for anybody who wants to participate. Type what you believe the problem in this statement is. Okay, anybody? So does anybody, was anybody able to identify what the problem is in the statement? If you need me to pull this down a little bit more, if you need to reread that, kind of look through that passage and see if you can highlight what the problem is. And if you're not afraid, just type it in the comment section. What is the problem in this statement? Okay, Tajay, thank you. His doctor thinks he has become addicted. So Tajay is saying that's the problem. The doctor is think, think that his, um, his problem is, has become addicted. So Tajay, my question would be, 
where did you get the word addictive from? Is it anywhere in this passage? The one thing we want to be careful of doing is adding anything or taking things away. We just want to stay focused on the information that's given. Don't add or take anything away. Okay, don't add anything extra or don't take anything away. And um, I think sometimes because we've been doing this work for so long and because we do different things in the field, what we tend to do when we get in front of the questions, we'll read the passage and then we'll make assumptions by either adding or taking away. So um, we want to be careful of that. And you just want to stick with the information given, nothing more and nothing less. So problem is pain management. Okay, so some people got problem is pain management. He could have or already had a strong desire for the pain medication. Okay, so what we're doing right now is we're coming up with what we believe the problem to be. And what I really want you guys to do is identify the problem just using the information given. So the problem in this in, in, in this here passage is the client states that nothing will work besides more medication. So he asked the social worker to call his doctor and ask him to give him more narcotics. That's it. The problem is the client believed that nothing will work besides getting more medication. All right. So the problem is not pain. So let's let's start over. So a 45 year old male was referred to a social worker by his primary care physician. He reports a debilitating back injury two years ago and says that his physician is not managing his pain well. So this is what he's reporting. He also reports that the physician plans to stop prescribing pain medication and wants him to receive services to learn how to manage his pain. We're not talking about addiction right now. We're not saying that he is addicted. We're, we're not, you know, the doctor doesn't believe that. Nowhere in that passage is the word addiction being used. However, it is saying that the physician plans to stop prescribing pain medication and wants him, the client, to receive services to learn how to manage his pain, right? So then the client states, nothing will work besides more medication. He asks the social worker to call his doctor and ask him to give him more medication. The problem in the statement is the client's belief that nothing will work besides more medication. So let's write that down and see where that takes us. So what's the problem? The client believes that nothing will work um, besides more medications. Is that what it said? So just stick with what was being said there. So the client states that nothing will work besides more medication. Okay. So the clients believe that nothing will work besides more medication. All right. Remember, guys, we don't want to add anything or we don't want to take anything away. We only want to focus on the information that's given that's in front of us and the four answer responses. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Does that make sense? All right. So now that we got the problem, right, who is the person that we're addressing in this statement? The person that we're addressing is definitely the 45-year-old client. So the 45-year-old client is the person that we're to be addressing, the person with the issue, the person with the problem. And the problem that this 45-year-old client has is that he believes nothing will work besides more medication. And when we're talking about nothing will work, nothing will work meaning nothing will take away his pain besides more medication. That's his belief. That's what he believes. Are you guys still with me? If you're still with me, say yes. All right. So I see some of you guys are um, getting ahead of me and answering the question and that's fine. But uh, basically what I'm trying to do here is work with you to kind of slow walk you through reading a question, identifying the problem, pulling out keywords, noting who you need to address in the statement. And then through all of that information, being able to derive at what is the correct answer. So I'm just slow walking just this one question. All right, so here we have 
We have uh, analytical type questions that we need to process, reason, and break down. We have some keywords knowing that this guy has chronic pain, he's dealing with narcotics, and his, um, you know, his, his, his situation has been very debilitating. The problem in this, um, in, in, in this situation is that the client believes nothing will work for him besides having more medication. So now, what is the last sentence asking us to do? And it's saying, how should the social worker respond? All right. So it's asking us, how should the social worker respond? All right. Now, this is where it becomes tricky. And this is where, you know, the fun happens. So the problem is the client doesn't think that anything else will work for him besides medication. So how should the social worker respond to that problem? How should the social worker respond to the client's belief that nothing else will work besides more medication? Do that make sense? When I put it that way, how should the social worker respond to the client believing that there, that nothing else will work for him besides more medication? A, should the social worker recommend that the client seek a new primary care physician who can better meet his need? Or B, provide psychoeducation on the link between mental health and physical health and discuss the potential for addiction to pain medication? Or C, agree to call the doctor and recommend that the client be given more narcotics? Or D, assist the client in advocating for himself with his primary care doctor to obtain more medication. Now pay attention. Here we got to understand the distractors. There are definitely some red flags in here and some distractors. Now remember, if we remember that the problem in the situation is that the client believes that nothing will work besides more medication, what is the appropriate response that the social worker should, keyword, should say to the client? Should the social worker recommend that the client seek a new primary care physician who can better meet his needs? No. So A is not the correct answer. So we could take that out, right? I don't want to um I don't want to do that. Okay. So no, A is not the correct answer, right? Or B, should the social worker provide psychoeducation? on the link between mental health and physical health and discuss the potential for addiction to pain medication. Or C, the B sounds really good. Or C, agree to call a doctor and recommend that the client be given more narcotics. So if the, the client is saying nothing else is gonna work but more pain medication, he's coming to you and saying, hey, uh, hey Mike, Call, call my doctor and see if you can get me some more meds because he's not going to give them to me, but I need these meds. Nothing else is going to work. Mike, are you going to call his doctor and ask for more medication on his behalf? No. So C is not the correct answer. Or D, assist the client in advocating for himself with his primary care doctor to obtain more pain medication. Now, D kind of sound like it could be the right answer. And some of us might get tricked up because of that word assist. And so we want to go there first without reading the question thoroughly and paying attention to what's being said here. So do we really want to assist the client in um, advocating for himself to get more pain medication? You as well as I know that there are other options. Pain medication is not the only option. You as well as I know that continued use of uh, pain medication could lead to um, an addiction. And so with that being said, I would not assist my client in um, trying to advocate for himself and trying to give him the right kind of words to say to his doctor, to convince his doctor to give him more medication. If anything, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with my client and try to help him understand the link between mental health and physical health and discuss the potential for addiction to main pain medication. So the correct answer here is B. All right. And I hope the explanation that I just kind of gave you all made sense. A is not the correct answer because in here, um, you know, 
all of a sudden we, we're just going to, are we going to recommend that he go see a new doctor because the doctor who understands addiction is not going to give his client any more pain medication and want his client to try other remedies? No, that's not a good idea. It's not C because um, agree to call the doctor and recommend that the client be given more narcotics. Well, first of all, we shouldn't be calling the doctor and telling the doctor his job and what it is that he needs to do. And also if the doctor had made a decision, excuse me, not to give more pain medication, then he have a good reason for not doing that. And in the same, you know, I'm going that same route with um, answer D, assisting the client advocating for himself with his primary care doctor to obtain more medication. That's just ridiculous. So the best answer choice out of all four, A, B, C, and D, is answer choice B, which is provide the cycle ed. Now, that's also tying into what the problem is. So the problem in this statement is the client believes that nothing will work besides more medication, but it's our job in this particular situation, based on the information give, given to provide some education and helping him understand the link between mental health and physical health and discuss the potential risk for um, an addictive behavior. Okay, did any of that make sense? I do have the rationale here in case you guys wanna read through that rationale and get a clearer understanding. There you go. Um, but what I'd like to know is, uh, did this make any sense? Um, me reading the question, taking my time reading the question, breaking it down the way that I broke it down, um, slowly looking at each um, answer choice, ruling out those things that don't make any sense, paying attention to the distractor, identifying the problem, and making sure that my answer connected to the problem. I know that was a mouthful. I know it was a lot, but this will be posted. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll leave this video up and you, you guys can kind of go back and kind of review it. Um, take down these pointers and use it for your own study practice. Um, I do provide one-to-one -one tutoring assistance. If anybody is interested, you can inbox me um, and you know I can provide you with some more uh, information or detail later if you're interested in um, knowing what it is that I do and how, how I do it. Um, but yeah, any questions on what was just provided? All right. If there is nothing else, um, enjoy the video. If you need to go back and kind of preview and review, it will be here for your uh, further review and further perusal. Um, thank you for joining in with me, and I will be uh, seeing and talking to you guys soon. Have a great afternoon.